consider the sequence of real numbers a1, a2, a3 and so on and they are telling us that in general a sub k is log base k plus 1 to the 2k minus 1 power of k plus 2 to the 2k power divided by log base k plus 2 to the 2k minus 1 power of k plus 1 to the k squared power. Let's quickly verify this. For the case when k is 3, when k is 3, k plus 1 is going to be 4, 2k minus 1 is going to be 5, so 4 to the 5th power in the base, and what we are taking logarithm of is going to be k plus 2, 5, and 2k power, which is 6. So the top looks good. And the same reasoning for the bottom. 5 to the 5th power and 4 to the 9th power, just matching them up. And as we can see, the bottom is going to increase by 1 every time. So 2, 3, 4, and so on. While the exponent in the base is increasing by 2 every time. So 2 to the 1st, then 3rd, then 5th. And of course, this is increasing by 1 every time, 3, 4, 5, and this is increasing by 2 every time, 2, 4, 6. And you can use the same reasoning in the bottom to really get to know the pattern. But once we acquaint ourselves with the pattern, we now have to worry about this p sub n. Let p sub n be log base n plus 1 to the 2n minus 1 power of 2 to the 2n power over log base 2 to the 2n minus 1 power of n plus 1 to the n squared power times the product from k equals to 1 to n minus 1 of a sub k. So we are multiplying this a sub k from k equals to 1 all the way to n minus 1. So we're going to be multiplying this one, this one, this one, all the way to a sub n minus 1. And to that, we are multiplying by this to get p sub n for integers n greater than or equal to 2. Now, that sounds crazy enough, but we are not even done. We now have to, after finding that, find the summation from n equals to 2 to infinity of p sub n or prove that the summation diverges. Before we go on, I want to recognize essentials of math for being the very first person to correctly answer this challenge. And one interesting thing I want to point out is that the answer seems to contain E. That's pretty fascinating. Let's try to find out where this E is coming from. I just wrote down the values for a sub 1, a sub 2, and a sub 3, as you can see above. And we want to go all the way to a sub n minus 1. And when we plug n minus 1 into this, so when k is n minus 1, we are going to get log base, so let me write this down, log base n. So when k is n minus 1, we get log base n to the 2n minus 3 power of n plus 1 so k plus 2, or n minus 1 plus 2, to the 2k power, or 2n minus 2 power, divided by log, base n plus 1, using the same reasoning, 2n minus 3, of k plus 1, in this case, is just n, to the kth power, n minus 1, to the second power, to this entire thing. Now we want to multiply by this expression. So here we have it, this entire thing, is a p sub n, and we want to simplify this expression as much as possible. The first thing I realize is that if you ignore all the exponents, so if you ignore every single one of these 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and even these 2n minus 3, 2n minus 2, so when all the exponents are taken out, we have log base 2 of 3 times log base 3 of 4 times log base 4 of 5, and so on. And this should remind you of a chain rule for logarithms. And the chain rule for logarithms, just in case you've never seen it, let me give you a basic example, such as log base 2 of 3 times log base 3 of 4 times log base 4 of 5. So let me just extend it all the way to log base 7 of 8. So it's 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8. Chain rule for logarithm, and I highly encourage you to prove this if you have not proven this before tells us that we can cancel out the intermediate values if they are the same. So if the number on top is equal to number on the bottom, we can cancel them out. And we can go on, on and on and on, all the way till we only have log base 2 of 8, 
which is equal to 3. So chain rule in some sense allows us to cancel out like a chain reaction all the intermediate values as long as they are the same. And in our case, that's what we have in some sense. We have log base 2 of 3, log base 3 of 4, log base 4 of 5, and it looks like all the intermediate values can cancel out if we do not have any of these exponents. Now, you may say you think we may be onto something because it's really easy to take out exponents from the logarithms. The top exponents can just be taken out and the bottom exponent can be taken out in a similar way as we are about to find out. So really, we can take out all the logarithms if we want to, and it looks like we do. And what happens if we take all the exponents out? What's going to happen to the rest of the expression? Well, the threes are going to cancel out, so if we do not have any of these exponents, all of these bases are going to cancel out, so n plus 1 are going to cancel out, leaving us with log base 2 of 2, which is going to be 1. So once we take out all the exponents, the top is going to simplify to log base 2 of 2, which is simply 1. That's a very good sign. So now let's actually focus on taking out the exponents. So we know this 2 can obviously be taken out, so that's 2. We know this 4 can obviously be taken out, but that's going to leave log base 3 cubed of 4. How can we take out this 3? Perhaps one of the easier ways is to use the property of logarithm that when top and bottom are raised to the same power, the value of the logarithm stays the same. So this is going to be log base 3 of 4 to the 1 third power, and now we can take 1 third out. So 3 is going to come out in the denominator. And we can repeat the same reasoning for the next one. 6 is going to come out from the top, and 5 is going to come out to the bottom of the fraction. And we can continue this until we have 2n minus 2, getting taken out over 2n minus 3, and we are going to have, for the final term, 2n coming out, and 2n minus 1 coming out. And once again, I remind you that the rest of the expressions is going to simplify to log base 2 of 2, which is going to be simply 1. So we have shown, so 2n was coming out from this one, so we have shown that when we multiply all the logarithms in the top of this fraction, we are going to get this very nice expression. And we see this is 2 over 1, and we can write this entire thing as 2n double factorial over 2n minus 1 double factorial. Remember that double factorial of an even number is multiplying all the even numbers from 2 all the way to that even number, in this case 2n. So we have 2n double factorial, and the double factorial for an odd integer is multiplying all the odd integers from 1 to that integer, in this case 2n minus 1. So we have this very nice simplified form when we multiply the top. Now let's try to multiply the bottom. Now for the bottom, we have a slight problem, because 2 and 4 are not going to cancel out even if we take the 3 out. We need these two numbers to be the same. But looking at it again, shows us how we can forcibly make these two numbers the same, because we have these two numbers being the same, both of them are 3, these two numbers are both 4s, and these two numbers are going to be both 5s, all the way to these two numbers being both n plus 1. So it looks like if we can flip every logarithm, so if we can flip this to log base 2 of 3, we flip this to log base 3 to the 4, so 4 cubed, and we flip this to log base 4 to the 9, so 5 to the 5th, then everything is going to cancel out once we take out the exponents. And there's a nice logarithm property that's going to help us out, which is log base a of b is 1 over log base b of a. So if we want to switch the base and the argument, all we have to do is flip the fraction upside down. So really, this entire thing, so 1 over log base 3 of 2 is going to become log base 2 of 3. 1 over this logarithm is just going to be the logarithm, except now we are switching them. So really, all the expressions from the bottom are going to flip upside down and move to the top. So in the end, what are we going to have? Well, the cancellation is going to be similar. In the end, the 2s are going to cancel out, leaving us with log base 2 of 2, which is 1. So in the end, we only have to look at the exponents once again. And the exponents are going to be, here it's 1 over 1, so 1 over 1. Here we are taking out 3 and 4, 
so 3 over 4, then 5 over 9. All the way, two, once you flip this, 2n minus 1 is going to come out on the top, divide by n squared, and we see that this is equal to 1 times 3 times 5, all the way to 2n minus 1, over, we have 1 squared times 2 squared times 3 squared, all the way to n squared, and we can simplify this once more. The top is 2n minus 1 double factorial, and the bottom is n factorial squared, multiplying every integer from 1 to n, and then we are squaring them. So it looks like our final simplified expression is going to be, so p sub n is this thing multiplied by this thing, and 2n minus 1 double factorial are going to cancel out, so we are going to have 2n double factorial over n factorial squared. But we can simplify this even more by realizing that 2n double factorial is 2 to the nth times n factorial. And just in case you don't see it, let me show you really quickly. Recall that 2n double factorial is 2 times 4 times 6 all the way to 2n. And if we take out a factor of 2 from each of the even numbers, we are going to take out n 2s, so we are going to have 2 to the nth. And when we take out 2 from 2, 2 is going to become 1. Take out 2 from 4, that's going to become 2, 2 from 6, or 3, all the way to n, which is 2 to the nth times n factorial. So in the end, our piece of n is going to be 2 to the nth over n factorial. Now it's time to finish it up. We want to find the summation from n equals to 2 to infinity of a piece of n. So let's go back down. So we want to sum from n equals to 2 to infinity of 2 to the nth power over n factorial, and we should recognize this as very similar to summation from n equals to 0 to infinity of 2 to the nth over n factorial, which is e squared, that's infinite series representation of e to the x, where x is 2, so our summation is going to be e squared, except that we have to take out the values when n is 1 and when n is 0, we don't care about them. When n is 1, we get 2 to the first over 1 factorial. When n is 0, we get 2 to the 0 over 0 factorial, which is 1. So our final answer is e squared minus 3. So let's go back up. This is pretty fascinating how logarithms themselves were not important at all. What really mattered were the exponents relating to each logarithm because every logarithms were bound to cancel out in the end. Anyway, the final answer to this question is e squared minus 3.